Hey guys, I had a great question today on the sugar alcohol erythritol. So someone just asked for some information on it or my opinion, and I don't think I've ever talked about it. So I'll give you a real quick little uh, breakdown. So some of you may be familiar with it. Erythritol is a sugar alcohol that you'd find in sweeteners like uh, Trubia. So it is used as essentially like a filler, like you would you know, instead of using like dextrose or, or maltodextrin or something you would see in common, uh, other common sweeteners like Splenda or uh, Sweet and Low or, or things like that. So essentially they were asking about whether it was like GI friendly. So a couple things on that. It does not readily ferment. So based on the research, the chance of it fermenting and causing any type of laxative effect like other older gen um, sugar alcohols like mannitol and things like that is extremely low to none. I've personally not seen it cause any issues in normal quantities. So that's not really a concern. Very low FODMAP, so probably safe for people in, you know, like SIBO protocols or IBS or things like that assuming you're not downing like gallons of it. Um, so like, you know, that, that couple packets of Truvia is probably gonna be fine. Second thing was caloric value. <clears throat> it's, um, some of it is absorbed, some of it's not. That percentage is gonna vary based on the source that you look at. But for all intents and purposes, it is about 0.24 calories per gram. So. If you had a product that was a packet and maybe it had stevia or monk fruit or sucralose or something, and then it had an erythritol filler of maybe like two grams, we'll say, you're looking at 0.48 gram or 0.48 calories in the product, essentially. So, you know, I don't personally think that's like really I think that's negligible and probably not something that you need to track especially considering like if you really want to nitpick the mustard that you put on your food is probably has 0.48 probably more than 0.48 calories so you know <clears throat> negligible again so it doesn't ferment shouldn't cause any gastric distress I've not seen it cause gastric distress so it's a I approve for <clears throat> Uh, most gastrointestinal issues and obviously like if you consume it and you directly notice a reaction then don't use it common sense right but for most people it's gonna be perfectly fine it's a great alternative um, you know that's <clears throat> pretty much the the long and short of it interestingly enough it is made through a fermentation process from glucose but it doesn't ferment when consumed um, you know, further down the GI tract, doesn't really seem to affect oral bacteria, you know. So, I mean, it's pretty benign as far as sugar alcohols go, you know, as I'm sitting here chewing gum with sorbitol. But, you know, yeah, go for it, I think. Like I said, unless you have a direct reaction to it, then I don't really see a whole lot of issues with it. There's not really many downsides. I personally, anecdotally, don't really see any problems in normal quantities. Unless someone's directly reacting to it, then, you know, should be good to go. So hopefully that's helpful.